You're a young guy and your life is shit and you're miserable and you hate your life. You're 18, 20, 23 maybe. And you think to yourself, you know, things cannot get worse. Well, actually you're right. Things cannot get worse. Because if you're a young guy, you're 18, 20, 23, whatever, you are at the bottom of your life. Simple as that. You have nothing going for you. You have no marketable skill. You are uh, without any kind of resources. I mean, assuming you didn't like win a lottery or, or happen to be the, ki the kid of some oligarch or something like that. You've got nothing going for you now. But over the years, it's gonna be a whole different story. Now contrast this with young women. Young women who are 18, 20, 23. They are at the top. They are at the peak of their attractiveness. They're never gonna be hotter than when they're 18, 20, 23. They're never going to be more sought after. Unlike you, you who are young, you who've got nothing going for you, yeah, nobody calls you up on a Saturday night, right? But if you're a hot 20-year-old girl, everybody is calling you up on a Saturday night. Yeah, you're at the peak. And that is the tragedy of women and the um, good fortune of men. Yeah, because see, a young woman who's 18, 20, 23, she is at the peak of her sexual attractiveness. Everybody wants to be her friend. Everybody wants to hang out with her. And of course, it's only going to be downhill from there. They, they peak early and it's a slow fade, a slow decay. And most women, as a matter of fact, don't even realize it. Most women, they think to themselves that, you know, when they're 25, 27, 30, they think that they're still as hot as when they were 18, 20. But all of a sudden, this depreciating asset, because that's what it is, a depreciating asset, this depreciating asset all of a sudden collapses in value. And when is it exactly that it collapses in value? When she hits age 35. 35, 40, all of a sudden she is no longer cute and hot. No, 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 she's like an old lady. And she can wear all the makeup that she wants, get plastic surgery, the best clothes, everything, but still not gonna change the fact because age is cruel, cruel to women. Yeah, they start at the top and then it's a slow fade until all of a sudden they just fall off a cliff. Guys in the manosphere call it hitting the wall. You can call it whatever you want, it doesn't really matter. The effect is the same. Women's sexual attractiveness all of a sudden evaporates. Age between 35 and 45. It doesn't really matter when exactly, it's that age. It's different for every woman and some women are still considered very sexually attractive beyond age 40, beyond age 45 even. But that's a microscopic, vanishingly small minority. Most women after age 35, so long. Yeah, and what happens to most guys after the age of 35? <laughs> they get hotter. <laughs> they get hotter, they get more attractive. Why? Because number one, they have more resources. Because like it or not, a man's sexual attractiveness depends on his resources. This is evolution, baby, and so don't fight it. You're 35, you're 40, you're gonna have better job prospects, you're gonna have more accumulated assets, you're just gonna be hotter because you have more stuff. And also what's gonna happen is that as you're aging into your 30s and your 40s, you're gonna have all of this experience, this, this gravitas, and you're not gonna make a to big to-do about it, you will probably be unconscious of it, but people will recognize it. People will realize that you're somebody to be taken seriously, and because of this, women are gonna to flock to you as you cross age 35, 40, and onward. That's guys' good luck. Because as I've alluded, all of this is based on evolution. Because a woman's peak fertility is in her early 20s. It's simple as that. And it's not you know, something that you can change by way of some law or, or you know, say that it's like society did it or some nonsense like that. No, it's biological fact. A woman who is 18, 20, 23, she's at the peak of her fertility. She is healthier than she will ever be, at least insofar as having children is concerned. 
And therefore, everybody else, both men and women, will find her incredibly attractive. And they will give her all of this attention. And they will want to be her friend. And, you know, she will be the, 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 the belle of the ball. Yes, when she's 18, 20, 23. But beyond that, it's a slow fade. Which is the exact inverse of what happens to guys. Guys, when they're 18, 20, 23, they don't have any resources. And also, they don't have any kind of self-confidence because they haven't achieved anything. Because a man's self-confidence comes not from other people's attention, as what happens with women, but rather a man's self-confidence arrives when he starts to actually do things. When he achieves goals in his life, career, business, whatever. That's how he gains self-confidence. Whereas with women, it's just attention. Attention is what props them up. Attention of others validates to themselves that they are worthy. And that attention comes from their fertility. And, uh, you know, people don't want to hear this, of course, because it seems to reduce people to just uh, animals. But we are animals. We are animals. What the hell do you think we are, huh? You know, angels of light and ether and some crap like that, magic fairy dust? No! We're mammals. We are primates. The chimp at the zoo is our cousin. Yes, we're animals and we respond animalistically to one another. Evolution dictates that a woman who is fertile and young enough and healthy enough to have a bunch of children is going to be the most attractive in our society. Evolution dictates that a man who has resources to provide for the woman or women in his life to bear his children, he's going to be considered the most sexually attractive, irrespective of whether he's good looking or not, because that's not really going to matter. From the point of view of evolution, it's how many resources do you have? And if you have more resources, i.e. more money, you can show off more goods and that you are bigger in the world, well, you're going to be considered hotter. And of course, that happens when you're older, when you've had the time to accumulate uh, goods, resources in your business and whatnot. You've had the time to grow your career and be successful. And that happens when you're older. Now, why am I telling you all this? Well, because a lot of guys, especially guys who self-describe themselves as incels, feel that their lives are misery. And most of these guys are young. Most of them are late teens, early 20s, and they don't know shit from Shinola. They've got all kinds of theories, and they feel misery about their life, and they hate women, and they hate the hole that they perceive themselves to be in. And they are in a hole, but it's a hole that you'll get out of. You don't even have to do anything. You just have to move forward in your life and succeed at the different things that you set your mind to. And as you succeed in your life, as you accumulate resources, and more to the point, become simply more successful, not only in the eyes of others, but in your own eyes. As you become more successful, you'll find yourself becoming more sexually attractive. Women will start to pay more attention to you. And as they pay more attention, that will give you a boost and that will make you work harder to build a bigger life for yourself, to make yourself even more sexually attractive. And, and that's the virtuous cycle that goes on. If you're a young guy and you feel miserable now, don't worry about it. I mean, I wish when I was young, people had told me this because when I was young, I was miserable too. Every young guy is miserable. It's, it's part of the process. And you don't fight it. You just roll with it and understand what's going on. You understand what's going on and you start to realize that the future is only going to get better for you. But if you're a woman, understand that this is as good as it gets. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to see more edgy content, go check out my Patreon in the link below. You'll find over 100 videos there on Patreon that you'll find nowhere else. And I also do a Sunday call-in show. It's called The Weekly Webinar, where we talk about different stuff. And uh, I take listener calls, and it's a lot of fun. It lasts two to three hours, and so check it out. The link in the, is in the description below, as I said. And thank you very much, and I will see you next time.